Hey everybody, good morning. How are you? We've had a couple drizzly days here and today's the sun's out and I am very much looking forward to going on my walk. Uh, I shared with you the other day that one of the things I love on my walk, especially on weekends, is you see all the parents and kids riding bikes, exercising together, and everybody is just like, you know, or if, or if you're, you know, far apart, have a good day. I mean, there just seems to be a togetherness that our nation has not seen in quite a long time. But, yep, I got a problem. I'll bet a lot of you are on the website Next Door Neighbor, you know, so where people are reaching out and helping each other and all that. Well, somebody posted yesterday that our streets are no longer safe in Livermore. There was a dinosaur spotting. And so it says, just be careful when we walk here because this dinosaur is really ferocious. Maybe I'll have to take an umbrella so I can poke at it or something like that if it starts to get at me. <laughs> so I got to tell you, um, the moms, oh, moms, you're my heroes today. I was going to I was gonna do teachers as my heroes today, but I'm going to do moms today. Um, I'll tell you a story in a little bit, and I just hope, no, I'll tell you right now. I hope my daughter doesn't kill me. So yesterday um, was not a really great day for myself. And at one point I just had to get out and walk and just get away from it all. I wasn't running away from home, but I was walking away from home. And um, I remember, <laughs> so I try and call my daughter so I can talk to her. And <laughs> she doesn't pick up and this is not good, et cetera. And she calls back later and she goes, yes. And I said, I was trying to call you. She said, mom, I ran away from home. I couldn't take it anymore. She said, I got in my car and drove away. Now, of course, Jerry's home with the kids. She said, and then I realized I forgot my shoes and my phone. And so I had to go home. So I called my best friend and we're laughing about it. And she and then she tells me this story. Um, her daughter is getting disc surgery tomorrow. She can't even move. She's in writhing pain. And so she, she she's fixing all these meals so the guys will be okay. And, you know, because she's going to be out of it for a while. And she just said, guys, you know, husband, you can go have um, chili. Kids, you can go have pizza. Eat the leftovers. <laughs> takes the bowl of chili out of the refrigerator and said, you mean I have to microwave it? <laughs> so, moms, you are awesome. Everybody's worrying about everybody. Everybody's worrying about themselves and you're worrying about yourselves and everybody else. So um, hats off to moms. Um, I saw this on somebody's Facebook or they sent it to me or whatever. Here's a mom trick that you can do if you've got little ones in the house. What you do is you do an inside scavenger hunt. And that would be a really fun thing to be doing with your kids right now. Um, there was shaped ones. There were color ones. Um, here's just some stuff you randomly find in your house. And my daughter approved of that. But then she sent this uh, picture to all of us. And I went, oh. They went, and now, of course, they didn't drive with the kids in the bed of the truck, but they got to um, William's best friend's house and put the kids in the back of the truck so they could scream at their friend from the street. I just think that's absolutely wonderful. So, moms, my hat is off to you. Uh, my hat is off, also off to this next person, and um, I just absolutely loved this image. Here is a 90 year old guy doing his wife's hair. And honestly, I'm getting to a point where um, 
I, I can't take it. I mean, Wendy said, do you want to go gray? And I said, no, I don't want to go gray. And uh, my hairdresser, who happens to be my daughter's best friend, um, said she would be happy to give me the tools and then I could do it, but can't do it till the end of the month because Amazon doesn't seem to have it in stock. And then um, John can do it. And I thought, <laughs> I'll bet if I did one of these with John doing my hair, we would have a lot of people watching and probably both of us would have to go into our corners when it's all over. So that's how it's rolling at my house. Um, so today, well, on Na International Quilting Weekend, I sewed with silk, okay? And I it was like a six hour sew in. I will never do it again. That was a once in a lifetimer, people. And I talked a lot about working with silk, but I didn't put it together in one comprehensive unit. So I wanna talk about silk. And what I would like, if you have questions, um, just type them in the bar. And then when I'm done with this nonsense, <laughs> I'll scroll up and answer questions. Oh, one other thing you were asking um, is what kind of face mask am I using? Um, I'm doing the fitted one, okay? And I, I don't even know why I am. I don't even know why I chose it. But I want to reiterate that I am lining it with this mesh which happens to be um fabric prep on both sides so it has a little more added layer i also might consider cutaway but the one thing on the pattern that i was looking at oh again these are t-shirts just strips one inch t-shirts i showed this on monday but the the pattern that i was using had you turn it from here i'm turning i'm turning it i'm leaving this part open okay because it's easier to get in there and turn it than than this. And then the other thing is, um, what was the other thing? I don't know, must not have been important. But anyways, this is mine. This is the look. Okay, that's the look, people. And the problem, my problem is that if I have it on like this, my glasses get all fogged up. So I'm not quite sure what to do about that. They're starting to go right now. Well, and don't you love my fabric though? And so I have been making them for everybody, neighbors, uh, it, my family, and then Pokey Bolton, you remember her from Quilting Arts Magazine and the uh, TV show, the uh, Quilting Arts TV show and uh, Craft Napa. She has friends that are in children's oncology units and the doctors have to go, kids with cancer, um, the doctors have to go in completely hazmatted up and the kids are freaking out because all they see is this monster coming at them. So she is asking for face masks that are happy, that, you know, something that's fun for a kid to look at rather than a big scary thing. I, I, they probably still have the big scary thing on, but at least this can bring a little happiness to them. Um, right now, I'm currently working on ones for my mom's place, but if you're interested in making some masks and, and getting them to these this doctor and this nurse who are Pokey's friends, um, go Google Patricia Bolton or Craft Napa uh, and then reach out to her that way. She would be so pleased. Um, again, I'm working on now my mom, the seven houses that my mom's aligned with. So anyways, okay, silk, back to silk. The first time I saw silk in a quilt, well, not the first time, but when it really, I'd say got to me was this quilt by Sarah Vettler. Um, she works with silk. She does a lot of digitized embroidery and uh, I just kind of, was stopped at what silk does. It's got a sheen and a wonderful aspect to it. So I started collecting silks, all right? And um, where do you get silks? Well, we have a store called Bay Quilts in Richmond, California. They have it. But also I will go, when I'm at, when I'm at quilt shows, there's always a booth with some silks in it. I'm gonna show you my collection. It's serious. Oh, this is heavy. I, it, 
right? Oh, yeah. So, um, silks are interesting to work with. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about first pre-washing. Um, I don't, and I'm crazy to not be doing it because we don't know where this fabric is being made. We don't know how it's being produced. And if we're afraid of our 100% cottons running, you have to worry about your silks too. Uh, so you can wash them. And um, to me, they feel a little bit different after, but the average person would, wouldn't know. So I did a little experiment because the reason I would pre-wash them is primarily for running. So I took three colors and I put them in a glass and I threw them in the microwave. And so this is what happened when I put the fuchsia in. I, I think it's the naughtiest, and this is just this little hunk, this little hunk got that water like that. Then I put a purple in. I went for intense colors, okay? Um, here we go, there. And then um, I thought, well, this is an intense color, this blue, okay? Hardly anything. I mean, I wouldn't even think twice about this, but so you can do that. now. Um, Here's the thing. I have some quilts that um, if they get dirty, I'm in trouble because it has that fuchsia in it. So I thought, oh, I could take it to the dry cleaners. And I mean, we all know the argument about that. You can argue it 10,000 ways, but things can run at the dry cleaners too. So that's just an FYI. So after seeing Sarah's, oops, I'm kind of getting out of order here. After seeing Sarah's quilt, uh, when Ami Sims was doing a fundraisers to raise a million dollars for Alzheimer's, the the um, for scientists to figure out how to stop Alzheimer's, that hair is bugging me. Um, she called out to us to make little silk quilts or like little quilts of a certain size. So I made this quilt and I hand quilted it. And what happened was, it was um, falling apart absolutely falling apart because like look at this you guys I mean this is this is the jam with silk okay so um, I wanted to make a bigger quilt and I decided to line it so I called Sarah Vettler and I said what do you use for lining the silks and she said I use uh, Floriani's or r and K's products and this was kind of the first time I really got familiar with R&K. Um, I called them and it and it was Jenny Haskins silk and they sent me two rolls of it and that's what I used. Uh, it, with Quilters Select, we um, made even a finer, a finer fabric prep than the, than the other one. But let me show you my quilt that I did and I realized I, ha I showed this, I think on the first day or whatever. I'm gonna hold it up big and then I'm gonna fold it and then come talk to you, so. Okay, this quilt is hand quilted, mm -hmm. and it was hand quilted with um, the Jenny Haskins on the back, and mine is even thinner. So, so it doesn't really bother the body of the quilt at all. Then this is a fun little project I'm working on right now. I think I might have shown it the other day. I don't know where you just that's felt on the back, and then I just. Um, I think I fused these down with, yeah, Apple Web, and then I'm just stitching through it. So this is something fun to do when you're just sitting there watching TV and want something mindless. But look at the sheen, you guys. Oh my gosh. Um, here is another one. I've done this in solid cotton fabrics, this quilt, and it's just, it's so much, it's so much better in silk. Then after, after, um, oh good, John's here to help me. Not on this one, but the next one. Um, oh, here's another one, neutrals and silks. Now, one of the problems with silks is that, you know how you can block out your cotton quilts? You can't block silk, silk out. I did a silk quilt and I couldn't find it that has triangles on the edge and it's about two inches bigger on the top than the bottom. And it would, you know, on something like this without any real clear edges, you know, I can just chop this off to get it the right way. Um, but I couldn't, I, that one, I don't know what I'm gonna do with. 
here, John. Um, when my dad passed, someone else cleaned out his closet and I didn't keep his ties. And so I went to the stores, the Salvation Army stores, and I got these um, men's ties and I made this quilt, this silk quilt. Thank you, John. I like your hat today. Um, and and I will be doing that as a top of a show. You know how jo uh, Joey, I think his name's Ricky, and I have to come up with segments. I'm going to talk about working with the silk ties. Oh, I was going to say, um, up at the cabin, there's a lot of, re this is where you get them. This is where you get them. <laughs> Go to a retirement community and find the nearest thrift shop. I got ties for like about 50 cents each, okay? And if I went on senior day, I'd probably get more than that. This is a quilt that um, was, in, was inspired here. I don't want to hold this up. Can you do that for me, honey? Um, this was inspired by Libby Lehman. And I made one for an auction for her. And then I decided to make it in silk. Originally, it was just supposed to be squares all the way around. And I used um, a basting spray. And it came up through the fabric, okay? And I called the company. And they said, there's no way to get it out. And they said, just consider it a design decision you have to make. And so I chopped it off, okay? And that's when I knew we had to come up with another basting method. And we came up with Free Fuse at Quilter Select. And then last but not least, this is what I'm working on. I've showed you already, but this will segue into Friday's episode. I know what I'm doing Friday. I'm being a grown-up here. What the heck's going on here? There we go. I'm currently quilting this. And this was the quilt that I was stuck. And uh, Ricky said, just pick up fabric and sew. So let me show you something about the quilting that I'm doing for fun. Where is it? Well, this one's, yeah, this one's okay. Thanks, John. I got it. So I'm gonna hold this up, you guys. It's all straight line quilting. And then I am going in and I'm doing um, triangles with matchstick. You see that triangle there? And I actually have tips for straight line quilting. I think we're good. Thank you. Um, I have tips for straight line quilting that I'm going to do on Friday. Uh, I love my walking foot, but there's ways to even do it easier. And there are some things you have to consider when you're doing straight line quilting. If you think it's just super easy, think again. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, so let me get up here. Um, so I would pre-wash my silks. No, I, no, you have to decide whether you're going to pre-wash. Then what I would do is before I cut out the shape, I would take this fabric prep where one side is um, a fusible, a low heat fusible, and the other side is, is where you put your iron. And then what I do is I pull out the fabrics I know I'm going to be working on before I cut the size, and I just fuse it on the back side. Now, I'm going to tell you that fusing is a dirty business, as Laura Wozolowski told us. So you may want to, when you're fusing, cover this with parchment paper and or just get yourself a really ratty iron that you don't care about. Um, I've, I've wrecked my Aliso. I actually have two. I'll show you the bottom. I'm kind of embarrassed, all right? I'm a trained professional. I know better than this. I know better than this. Now, how I'm going to get this off is, is I'm going to take, you guys are going to have a heart attack here, um, a little Ajax, you know, and maybe a 4-0 uh, steel wool. Um, the other thing is if it doesn't come off, I thought about maybe getting oven cleaner and just painting it on. Uh, you know, I've tried the brands that um, that are supposed to get off the stuff and it just doesn't it if it's that trash you're in trouble and then because of the running issue um when i'm pressing shapes from one side to another this i take freezer paper and i iron it onto my quilting surface all right i'm not quilting i'm sorry my pressing surface and then when the fuchsia runs or whatever it goes onto this and I don't have to change my cloth, you know, as often. Because when I was doing the, the get me out of my rut quilt, I pretty much trashed the whole surface of my ironing pad and I had to replace it. So um, it, it, you, you can't block it. It's, it's 
kind of hard to get. Oh, the other thing, the other real negative, it's expensive. It, it just is. Um, it, ju it just is. But oh my gosh, it is so beautiful to work with. I probably would not do a silk quilt for a quilt that's really going to be used. I would keep it for uh, wall art. So um, I want to share this with you. Claudia File had, yeah, I've tried, I've tried everything, Linda. I've tried, I mean, that is like, ugh. but anyways, um, Claudia File was on the show recently and she's from Germany and her quilts are get out of town fabulous. Let's take a look at this one. And again, there's silk. I couldn't get a whole screenshot on it on my computer. Um, and Claudia does not line her fabric. And I don't, to me, it's living dangerously, but what can I say? She wins the ribbons. Now, uh, Claudia's show, oh, I don't know. You can just go in there and search it. I'll show you how in a minute. Uh, look at, look at her quilting on this. Look at, I got to take this off and go on this. Okay. Now, wait, hold on. If you think that's something, look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Claudia, so on, okay, for $19.95, you can get on the quilt show for six months, guys. And, and there's so much there. So, there's a, if you go to say watch shows, um, there's a search function. And right in here, I um, put in silk and then shows that had things about silk in it come up with their show number right over here. And you can, to the left hand side, and you can click that and you'll be fine. The quilt, the number of the show is 2413. Thank you. Um, we also have, we're doing the whole thing, the, a magic pad, a dryer sheet. Oh, dryer sheet, Nancy, pff, didn't even, I, I, it's a bad situation in Livermore, California. Um, then we also have, if you're a subscribing member, Claudia has a fabulous, fabulous DVD that you can watch for free. We typically do that as an add-on um, to our shows. So, so I, it's beautiful. Her work is fabulous. And actually, sometimes Claudia is in here. So, um, yeah. Keep it up, Claudia, that's for sure. And on her show, she showed a quilt that she was in, working in progress with, and she, and we aired the show a little bit earlier than what she thought it was gonna be, so we sent her on a mad scramble to finish that quilt. <laughs> Set my apologies, Claudia. Um, so I'm going, I'm going to look at comments here. I wanna tell you just also, oh, this is important, um, the, the, Current show is Violet Craft, and I'm sure you're familiar with her work, but also Kathy Degendorfer um, was on the last segment. And um, if when you watch the show, go all the way through the credits. That's all I'm going to say. We went into overtime for this, okay? <laughs> it's just great. All right, I'm gonna get rid of overlays and I'm going to look at questions. No, I have to get rid of this over here and see what we have. Uh, yeah, Karen said she saw her quilt in Houston. It's gorgeous. They're gorgeous. I mean, it is so, it is so, oh, and Hannah Laura said she's really nice too. So the fusible for the lining is Quilter Select Fabric Prep. Um, what Claudia's contention in not using it was that it changed the hand of the silk, but I think it might be because that's the product she has access to. And it does take a little bit more prep and work and all that. So, um, Diane, again, you guys, it is Fabric Prep by Quilters Select. All right. Uh, Nancy, it was a fun show. She, she, she's a, she's a good SOS pads work. Great. Didn't work for me. Um, cheap as I'm refusing only when you mistake. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Um, somebody, uh, jo Joanna is saying she, you just go get a cheap iron, you know, and just do that for your fusing. That's what I would try. Goo gone. Is that you again? <laughs> I gotta see if goo gone works. <laughs> it saved the bed of my machine. <laughs> 
cat. I love you guys. Um, iron over a bed of dry salt. I did. <laughs> Clean your iron with a Mr. Clean sponge. I'm going to try Goo Gone. I'm kind of excited about that too. So, um, yeah, Friday, I'm going to show you straight line quilting and I'm going to show it with the ruler. I, I was a little apprehensive to do this earlier because you guys have seen the setup. It's hilarious. I have to work around and stuff, but, um, I so love straight line quilting. I just love it. So the quilt show, Rondi, thank you. Um, Oh, my top is Johnny was. <laughs> Someone's asking. Do I mix silks and cotton in a quilt? Um, I haven't, but I don't know why you couldn't. I can't think of any reason why not. Um, if anybody can think of something, you can post it down there. Um, okay. Oh, I have a crazy quilt, Sharon, that she bought at a yard sale years ago. It has silk in it along with other materials. How do I freshen it? I don't know, Sharon. Um, maybe put it on the back in the backyard in the shade you know on the lawn on top of a sheet or something i have a crazy quilt uh, that was in my family and and the the silk is shattering it's it's shattering in it um crazy quilts are very very fragile and i i have heard this and i don't know if it's true or not so just take it with a grain of salt but I've heard that some of the silks were weighted with lead and that might be the reason it's shattering but if you have a quilt historian here, she'd say, oh, that's just a pile of you-know-what. But, um, yeah, let's see. Boy, we're on to something. Oh, okay, so Denise, the best place you're going to find silks would be at trade shows. Um, but we have a place in California, in Richmond. It's on the border of Richmond and Berkeley. It's called Bay Quilts, and she has a rather nice selection. Oh, I want to talk about this too. I'm sorry. I really like Dupiani's the best. All right. I just think that's, oh, God. Um, but this is a different silk that I got at uh, Houston, I think. And I think it's Thai silk is what it is. It is completely different than the Floriani. It doesn't quite have the shine. But what it has, it has the weft and the warp in two different colors so it's kind of a hybrid of shot cottons and that's one reason i love um shot cotton fabric and we do sell those in the store i mean they're just gorgeous they don't quite have the sheen but okay roberta said less stable dye in old silk silk quilts you know don't you wish that we could all be in a room together and just be throwing these ideas about uh brightex i don't know jill i would call them up I, I don't know. Um, and I typically get about a half yard, a half, a third to a half. Um, unless like I'm doing that neutral quilt, I know I'm going to be needing a lot of the neutrals and stuff. So, oh, Dharma, Dharma Trading Company has it, Cindy? Really? I did not know that. Um, and then yes, um, oh, shot cottons are wonderful. Okay, Linda Z's has it in Arlington Heights, Illinois. It has wonderful silk. So see, that's what you have to do. Here, let's just keep looking at this. That is true about the silks and dyes were very different. Okay, we're all in agreement. No one's going to have to go sit in the corner because they're upset. Hey, you guys, I, San Diego, I made my granite silk. When I pressed it, the purple color started to run. I So I hand washed all the other colors. Yeah, that's the thing. They're very unstable. You don't know where they're made. You don't know, you know, what this bolt will do versus this bolt or whatever. But man, they are so beautiful. The last thing I want to say as we come to a conclusion is that um, Ricky uh, tried to do a Facebook Live on Tuesday from up up in his house and um it was a disaster we got through it but he is going to la vida tomorrow and he's going to teach you something it'll be noon california time one colorado time and then on saturday he's going to do the reveal of um the lizzie albright quilt so you want to put that on your brain and in your calendar also don't forget lilo's um 
Lilo's series that she's doing on design, on really great things to enhance your artistic ability when making quilts. How do you get it? It is not a video. It comes in your Wednesday mailbox and your Sunday mailbox and either download it or print it out. So, okay, so as far, hi from Israel, may I please wish you a happy and peaceful Passover. Thinking of you, thinking of my grandchildren, their mom's from Israel. So a blessed Passover to everyone. And I will see you Friday. And we're going to do some straight line quilting. Okay. Have a good one and be kind to yourself. Be so kind to yourself.